What's going on, guys? SmartHelping.com here. We have an HR tool, human resources. And what do human resources do? Well, they're one of their main things is tracking headcounts and hirings and firings. So <clears throat> I was thinking to myself, what would be a good way to build some way to keep track of these things, give some visualizations, and allow um, some forecasting? So, I've got an instructions page here that helps um, when you're going through it. You can read through this and it'll help um, you understand. In general, you'll enter or adjust all the cells in light yellow with blue text only. Those are the inputs, and these can change as well. It doesn't have to be 30, 60, 90 days. And your data entry is going to be here, and that's going to drive your dashboard and your visuals. So let's go through this and see what it means and see if you know it'll be helpful for your organization. The first um, thing you'll do when you get this is you go into the data and clear this out. Just highlight the rows, right click, clear contents. So you can put your own data in. The next thing you're gonna do is go put in your department list. Now this could be super high level like most companies have general administrative, sales marketing, research and development. Um, those are the main three, but you could break these down further. You could break it down into branches. You could do whatever you want. I just put in 28 slots here as just kind of a, a template that should fit most cases of um, users that are going to be utilizing this tool. So you put in your list of things, departments you're tracking here and <clears throat> after you do that if you already have had uh, you know I'm assuming most cases this is going to be for for those that already have um, employees but if not then either way your next step is going to be adding potential hires or adding the people that are already there so this is works like a transaction log a little bit you're going to put in column A the department, which is going to be one of the 28 slots defined already. And if you change these, like I can put test here, go into here, test will now show up as an option. Undo that real quick. So <clears throat> what you're doing here is just selecting a department. You're going to select if it's an add or a loss. If it's If you're entering... Um, employees that already exist, it'd just be an add entry. So just hit add the current count and the date, which should just be any date um, less than or equal to today's date if it's a current person. Now, <clears throat> so that's how you kind of load it up. And I just showed, like, I put all these on 10, but I just kind of loaded and said, okay, here's my current employees. That'll. Um, Populate into the current count, which is just counting any employee based on the date here and the department type. And if it's add or loss in the, the sum here, the, the value, it's going to say how many current employees you have in each department. Um, and we'll get into the colors here in a, a little bit. But first, I just want to go through the base logic. So that's how the current count is being calculated. Um, then... Let's say in November, on November 25th, you expect to have three people hired for in the general administrative department. So you just put three, you put add, and the date. Now see, that's 1125. So this is going to look at, um, it's going to take the current date automatically with the today function. It's going to measure out based on whatever you put in here, like you can put in, uh, 180 days in this slot or whatever whatever you want it's going to go out that many days and it's going to count how many expected employees you will have by the end of 30 days from today based on all the ads less all the losses so if I expect to add three here lose one here it's going to net all that up based on the dates and give you the uh, your expected headcount based on what's actually planned to be happening. 
um, for the next 30, 60, 90 days. So, and that works the same exact way for every single row here. And it's just going to um, be based on whatever's entered in these columns. You can also put a note here if you need to. Um, and it's that's pretty much as simple as... I try to make it as simple as it needs to be, but um, provide enough logic and granularity to be useful. The next part is... We can talk about the color coding. Well, actually, no. Let's go. Let's dive into just general administrators. So, let's. We started with 15 here. We'll just walk through. So, GNA. I put in 15 as an add on 10.1. <clears throat> then I put in on 11.25. I expect to add three new hires. So, November 25th is going to fall into the 60 day or less buck bucket because November is less than December it's greater than November 4th so it's going to fall into the 60 days so you can see there we're at 14 we're at 15 and the next 30 days we we're expected to be at 14 because well right below that on 10 20 I have a loss of one but then when you get all the way up to November I expect to add three so you can see we're we start at 15 we lose one within 30 days but then we're going to add three so that puts us net in the next 60 days at 17. And then I have one more transaction here, a GNA of an add of five on January 1st, 2021. Maybe we're doing some new hires at the beginning of the year or whatever. So then you go from 17 and 90 days out, you're at 22. Now that probably makes more sense and now we can go into how the color coding is happening. So you can see down here I did a matrix, and this is just doing dynamically the ex. It's doing the expected head counts minus the plan head counts. And this plan or model would be coming. Let's say you had a financial model, and it was telling you that department should have X, Y, or Z. Um, should be at X, Y, or Z in its total headcount as of, you know, the current and as of this date, this date, and this date. It's going to say, well, based on your actual planned hires and fires or um, attr general attrition and the current employees, it's going to say, are you on plan? Are you over plan? Are you under plan? And under plan is basically meaning you're not you don't have in your pipeline of hirings enough net um, additions to meet the model. So you better find some more people to hire or prevent the people who are trying to quit or or being fired. You know, it's just that whole dynamic. Uh, so that's going to show a positive or a negative value here. And then if it's actually the same, if you're directly on plan, you can see here we had a couple blues. It'll just turn blue. Otherwise, it's red, and so all these reds like are saying, "Well, our our projections are saying we need more than what we plan to have." Or if it's all green, it means you're hiring more, and you've got enough capacity. Essentially, this is basically for capacity. Um, you've got enough capacity based on what the model says you should have at um, in the next 30, 60, 90 days. So, I thought this was really cool. I thought this was a tool that's simple enough that pretty much anyone could get in here and just enter data and have a great way to track um, and forecast um, hirings and firings. Uh, super useful for basically any organization. Um, the last part of it is a visual. So you can see here, it lists all your departments at the bottom that you've entered in dynamically and it'll change if they change. And it's showing you the current and then the 30 day out, 60 day out, 90, at, 90 day out net surplus or um, shortage. So here, all these negatives are saying, man, these are all the ones that were in red. And if you go out 90 days, these are there are a lot of uh, shortages here in, in these departments. And then it's 
you got a couple here, other 14, other 15 are good. Other 16 and 17 are good for current and 30 days out, but then if you get 60 to 90 days out, there's not enough plan to be hired. Um, and so on, you can analyze each department in a nice visual way to see kind of where you're at, positive or negative um, on the headcount summary. So, um, hopefully this will be helpful if you want to purchase it. It's going to be a one-time fee of $45. Um, I'll list it on my site at smarthelping.com. Uh, I'll also list it at Eloquence and eFinancial Models. Uh, same prices everywhere, obviously. And I think that's it. Let me think if there's anything else that needs to be said here. Um, I don't think so. Oh, and it, let's say you only had a couple departments. Let's say we cleared out these. You just hit um, clear contents. And if you look at the visual, it will update. Um, and the proportions, like the size, you know, this is all based on just how Excel charting works. And so um, I just tried to make it as big and as clear as possible. And it'll update. Now, I could, in Google Sheets, this will work if you had blanks. It would readjust the size of the chart, but Excel is not as, um, doesn't do that as easily. So it's just going to stay the same size. And then based on how many departments you have, it's going to show that many um, bars. So, all right, that's all I got for you. And I'll see you on the next one.